All right, guys, I'm going to be uh, just kind of sitting here for a second, just waiting for some people to come in. If you were here early, you got a little look at some of my stuff. I also want to... Um... <sighs> How are you guys all doing? Is there anybody here yet? Sorry, I'm still trying to share this out a little bit. So... Just one second. Da, 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 da. Oh, hey, I see I got somebody here. Sorry. Hope you stick around for a moment. I'm still just getting set up. I'm trying to learn. The, the new OBS like puts me live really quick, and I'm just trying to see if I can make my chat pop out in a better way. But, you know, go ahead and say hi. I can see the chat. I'm going to go ahead and just have to be uh, kind of looking over here when you guys go ahead and say anything. So that'll be cool. So, you know, sorry guys, I haven't been making as much content lately. I've just been super busy with work. We had a big outage I talked about in a couple of my videos. Had to recover. I finally got an update out to uh, the Splinterlands game. I had filmed this a few days ago before the big Iron Finance meltdown. I didn't really have a chance to talk about the Iron Finance meltdown yet, and I'm sorry about that because I know they were featured in my last video about Adamant Finance, and Adamant Finance does still seem like a pretty good project. They've been dealing with some issues with being attacked, but still recovering, doing pretty well. All the money's been safe, but of course, those farms they had of Iron Finance that were paying out just absolutely amazing rewards did lead to some heartache of some people. Now, in my video, I did say that I was putting only a small amount of money into the Titan Matic LP pool and that I was going to go ahead and put uh, more of my money in the Iron USD pool. And I did explain in that video kind of the breakdown that Iron was only partially collateralized. There was a little bit of risks there. But I was willing to take that risk to try to get the higher APYs. Now, I ended up being okay in that overall project because the iron token did hold its peg of at least 75 cents roughly when you went ahead and redeemed it. I had to do that as well. But I had farmed enough Addy tokens, farmed enough additional rewards, and got out of my uh, Titan Matic pool with a little bit of money that I came out just a tiny bit ahead. Obviously, that's pretty disappointing because most of us were expecting to be far, far more up than we ended up being from those pools. So I'm going to be doing a full uh, update on Adamant, but I decided I would just talk a little bit today about it in the live stream um, and try to get you know some people a little bit of a sneak peek at some of the stuff I'm going to be looking at pretty soon. So it's just something that uh, you know is is going on right now, and and the, and everyone's having to deal with and recover. So we'll go ahead and see if a few more people get into the stream here before I really go any farther. I'm going to get a quick drink of water. Thanks for the one person I have hanging out. Go ahead and say hello. And if there's anything you want me to take a look at, you're the only one here. So I'll probably do it. Oh, let me see something. Yeah, the audio looks good. That's good. I do have to say thank you to all the new subscribers. I, I you know, only hit a thousand, it feels like, not that long ago, and I'm pushing up near 2,000 subscribers. So I do know that some people are finding some of my older videos, some of the stuff on, uh, I know ones that I get a lot of random comments are on my Townstar one. So I'm going to be taking another look at Townstar pretty soon and trying to do a new, new player's guide with some updated information because you can't, you, Jimmy's and dual accounting on one computer is not really allowed anymore. And I, I, some of my old videos show me using two towns. I had one guy say, hey, you're going to get banned. And I'm like, no, I stopped doing that because they said to stop. But it was pretty bad. Adamant, it's, did you say Methlore? Methlore. Is that on Adamant?
I don't know what that is. I guess here I'll I'll try looking it up on Coin Gecko. Oh, Minimatics on my tab to look at. I was going to talk about it a little bit. I only know uh, the beginning of it, and I was going to just introduce you guys to it because they made a partnership with Polydragon. So I'll be talking about them in a minute. I was trying to look up this uh, Melhor. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. In general, yeah, we're talking about Adamant. I really do like Adamant. The fact that they combined the Pancake Bunny with the Ellipsis model when it comes to the rewards also have said in their paper that they've protected themselves from flash loans. They've solved a lot of the problems that really plague some of the other uh, AMMs that are out there. And they've also built a very, very rewarding token model because not only are you getting the 30% for fees, you also have that opportunity to lock your Addy and then get all that extra Addy from the people that are unpatient. One thing I'm going to throw at you guys is do you think that we should be claiming our Addy early and going right into the lock or if you should be letting the vest go away because you lose 50%, but the APY and the vesting pools are so just enormously high because of how many people are claiming early that it's kind of an interesting thing. So we'll start out just really quickly. I, I showed you this site a little while ago. It's one ran by my friend. He, it's supposed to be an advertisement site for different uh, crypto projects. And my little face is on here because he gave me one. So I just try to show it every once in a while. It's called Polypixels. The idea is that you can come here and just see a wall of different projects. Click on the little things and you go to their links or you go to their home page if you're a YouTuber. And as you can see, he's got a few big uh, sponsorships in here from the Poly Dragon team, the Splinterlands team. He's got this Safe Bees one. I forget what this one is. It's kind of interesting. You actually, I don't know if this is the best one for a big person because what is that? Anyone know? I'll click on it. We'll find out. It's Sidekick, <laughs> but you have to click on it to find out. So uh, some people might not be willing to do that. So. Oh, so Iron Finance is still like the, the website is still functional for you to redeem. That's all you can really do. So I was going to talk about this first. So the, the, the token had a flaw in it that are not enough people realized or the people that did realize didn't share it. I'm not really going to talk that bad about the team because I don't honestly know if this was a soft rug pull, if it was a big rug pull. The one thing that I have heard that I kind of believe is that the team knew that there was this exploitable part of the iron token and they just didn't tell anyone and then the amazing returns that the token was creating caused just an enormous amount of money to flow into titan and to flow into iron and then one of the problems was just as fast as the token can go up because you had to buy it to mint iron so you were constantly buying it to mint more iron so you could get into these amazing pools that when you decided to redeem your iron you had to sell it to get out sell it to get out sell it to get out and the main problem was that they had a 10 minute average time uh, on how much Titan to give you when it was sold out. So I believe that ended up getting exploited by a few people. And then they were playing around with it so much that they messed up the peg and then they flipped out the marketplace and we all started to dump our tokens and the token couldn't recover from that. So it's a pretty messed up situation for sure. Yeah, I can, I'll can. i write down Shield Network, and I'll take a look at that maybe at the end of this video just really quickly. And then if it interests me, I'll do a video. I can't say I'll do a video on anything for sure. I'm not going to cover projects that I think don't have any like unique things going on or anything very cool. But if, if something's good, I will definitely feature it if you guys bring it up. So going back to this, just for anybody that doesn't fully understand what seems to have happened, is that a whale out there figured out that if you dump Titan... It lowers the price and then the market recovers for a little while when you redeem your iron you can get more Titan than you should and then you can sell that Titan to get more money and then event and then you can repeat that process while the markets recovering but when too many people play with that mechanism of dumping the price letting it recover the average price being lower than the current price you all of a sudden when that got exploited too much, it messed up the peg on the iron token and then things weren't working right anymore. And the whole project just fell apart because it was so 
everyone started to sell the token. It started to drop and it just went in this cascade of just falling over and over and over again. And so the Titan token fell all the way down to zero with a supply that was just at some insane amount that we didn't think was possible if you didn't really understand the project. Now the iron token did what it was supposed to do in that it held its about 75 cents peg because it was backed by USDC and we were all able to redeem it. But if you were in an iron USD pool, you had some impermanent loss depending on when you took your LP out of the actual pool. And then you had some more loss when you redeemed your iron tokens and you didn't and you got this Titan that is you're not able to redeem. Now, the current plan of the iron team is they are going to rebuild their site. They are going to try to fix the problem that was in the iron token and the Titan token combination for doing that kind of situation. And then they're going to try to um, recover and rebuild. They haven't talked about a compensation plan as of yet because I think they want to figure out how they're going to rebuild. Now, they had a problem on the BSC network, and on the BSC network, once they figured out how to fix some things and they introduced some new things and they started building up a base, and then when they came over here and introduced Titan, they were taking a lot of their profit to pay back the people that had the issue on the BSC network, and they made most of those people whole. Now, the question will be, can they rebuild, get this site going on Polygon again, get it going on BSC? BSC again maybe go ahead and branch out to another network out there that comes online in the near future and then they might build some kind of compensation plan for the people that got wrecked in Titan or at least some kind of compensation plan for the people that got wrecked in iron because iron was supposed to be in theory a stable coin that was just kind of backed a little bit with the Titan token I don't know what's going to end up happening but it's going to be very interesting Oh, I'm glad you're into uh, Step Finance and Soul Farm. You know, I wasn't going to talk about the Solana projects, but maybe we'll take a quick look at those as well at the end of the video because I do think that right now being early in Solana is not a bad thing because eventually as that project starts to get built out more and more and more, the uh, Soul Farm is going to be able to add a whole bunch of new t things and it's going to be really cool. So let's go ahead and go take a look at Adamant because one of the things I will say is that while... Iron Finance fell apart and it didn't go well. If you were using Adamant for your pools, there's a good chance that you might still have been profitable because the token is now sitting here at $73. It's been going strong. They've been surviving this DDoS attack. They've gotten back to $300 million staked into the platform. Their, their model here is really, really strong. They're basically going, look, if a new vault comes out on Polygon and it looks exciting and cool and people want to put money in it, well, I'm going to add it to my platform. You guys are going to have to do your own due diligence and be very careful because I'm not going to guarantee that these projects aren't going to have problems, but I'm going to give you an opportunity to hedge your risk. And that's one of the things you need to understand a, a site like Adamant is letting us do. If you are in Iron Finance and you were letting them go ahead and take some take 30% of your iron finance Titan rewards and give you Addy instead well then when Titan fell apart you still had that adamant that you were earning and depending on how long you were here and how long you were earning it it might have even covered a good amount of your losses and it gives you a token that going forward you can continue to stake and continue to earn money on and maybe become whole on so this is kind of an interesting way for you to be able to play in some of those Degen kind of brand new farms with really crazy APYs because if they're on here you're earning two tokens instead of one and if that other token tanks you have a chance to maybe get your money back with the other and that token if adamant continues this model and people are willing to come over here and keep investing in it can be locked up or staked to continue earning really incredible rewards and we're going to talk about that. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. I do. I would appreciate the people who are hanging out and watching at least going ahead and giving it a like. I understand I lost a few viewers. Maybe they didn't really like me not just totally bashing the Iron Team, but I just don't know if they really, really meant for that to happen or were part of the people dropping it. I do think that Adamant help me out to not get hurt so bad from it and I want to go ahead and share with you the current pools that I decided to go ahead and get in. So there is 
the RUSD pool, which is a new stable coin pool from the Ramp DeFi team. The Ramp DeFi team, I think, has a little bit of a better name than, say, Iron Finance. They haven't had any major problems. And we're going to be looking at their platform in just a moment, showing you how this token is issued. And it is issued more traditionally, like DAI or uh, VI. And even those tokens don't always hold their pegs perfectly. But they don't usually have runs that drop them down to like 25 or 30 percent down for a very long amount of time because then somebody can pay back their loan very, very cheap if they didn't keep it in the RUSD token. The other one that I went ahead and got in because it came up here and I thought with Ramp doing the new brand new platform and being cross chain and having this new stable coin that they might go up is I got into the Ramp and Ramp and uh, Wrapped Ether, Ether one here. It has a pretty okay APY, but none of these are these crazy four to five thousands that we were talking about before. I am going to be thinking about um, playing around with some of these more risky farms that show up here because if you look at some of the APYs that come in here and, and with understanding that you can go ahead and get into um, you know some, some pretty interesting pools like this QE Minimatic one where you can earn 12,000 percent and once again like I said you can you can go ahead and hedge the fact that maybe that Q token isn't going to hold up its value and it might go down a little bit because you're automatically giving up some of that reward to earn the Addy token. So it's an interesting idea of a way to play around with maybe, you know, the Krill Quick pool or the GFI pool or these new WEX poly pools. All of these I only suggest you getting into and, and remember I'm not a financial advisor so this is just my opinion. If you are someone who can be very active in these projects and watching these projects because almost all farm tokens go down. The question is, are they going down faster than they're earning you rewards? Because if they're able to go down in a slow manner, or at least go down, come back up, go down, go, come back up, because their, their project is continuing to do things and build out new things, then it is possible that you're making more money than it's going down. But that's the big question with every single farm is, can that token find a way to go down slowly? And then the next question is, are they able to be a token that can generate such an amazing use case, use case that instead the token goes up in value? And Adamant has seemed to do that because their token has been steadily increasing since I got into it in the high 40s, now into the low 70s. Now we're going to see if it can hold up there. I kind of expected after they had this uh, website hack that they might dip. I was wrong. They didn't dip very hard and they're, they're holding up pretty well. And one of the reasons I think why is just because they are being so fast about adding so many different pools. And you can see like some of these pools only have $50,000 in them because this is really some Degen stuff here. These ones that are, you are seeing that are sitting here at like 4,000, 3,000% APYs. Those APYs are pretty much almost in the world of, of just not real. But if you play these right and, you, and you're earning the Addy token and you get in and out of these and you move around your tokens and you really manage your risk, you might be able to play in these and make some good money. The other thing you can do is just find the good, the better, safer pools. So if we go ahead and this is another play that you can do if you're somebody maybe with a little bit more money, is you can look into some that are theoretically safe. You know, wrapped ETH and BTC, if you've got a larger amount of money, you're on Sushi Swap, you put it in over here, you're earning the Addy tokens, and you're getting 127% uh, on something that would be relatively safe. This is where everyone has to kind of figure out where you are, what's your level. Do you want to put smaller amounts of money into the, the more like riskier pools do you want to put large amounts of money into some of these safer pools that can still earn pretty good percentages i mean eth to usdt and you're earning 330 percent that is a, a really solid return uh, if you're a fan of ethereum now obviously right now the market's pretty red we kind of skipped going over that because people started asking about projects but you have to know that um this is kind of the game in DeFi. Do you want to go ahead and get into like a little bit more safer stuff? And do you or do you want to play in some of the more quick uh, kind of smaller farms?
Now, I did mention I got into the ramp one, so I wanted to go ahead and talk about that really quick. So this is ramp DeFi. And so we're going to talk about a little bit about how they go ahead and mint their RUSD token. As you can see, it's sitting at about 96 cents right now. I do expect it to kind of float around 96 to 95 cents and maybe sometimes go up to like around a dollar. And honestly, it might be a little bit more on the Polygon network. And I'll explain why it might be a little bit more on the Polygon network as, composed, as opposed to the Binance Smart Chain. And that's because right now, if you wanted to come and mint this asset, there's a lot more that you can mint it with on a Binance Smart Chain. So you can deposit any one of these pools. And it's a very interesting idea. And we'll just go ahead and talk about these top two single asset ones. But it would work the same for any of these. So you go ahead and you come over here and you stake your tokens, whether it be ramp or cake. You'll earn an, AP, an APY or an, uh, an APY on the tokens because they're going to go ahead and put those tokens to work staking and earning rewards. So let's say you put your 100 cake tokens over here. They're going to keep growing at 112%. So your collateral is going to be staking and growing. Then you can go ahead and mint the tokens. When you mint the tokens, you can mint, depending on the token, a certain percentage of your balance. So since Cake is considered kind of a premium product, you can you can take out up to half of your position in the uh, RUSD. Since Ramp considers itself to be a little bit uh, not as stable, which makes sense if you look at their token price, you can only take out one fourth of your collateral that you put in. But it's a very interesting thing to look at if you are currently holding either of these tokens or any of these collateral stablecoin vaults or any of these other LP vaults that you see listed here because it gives you a chance to do what is called leveraged farming. And this is something that you have to be very careful with and understand what you're doing because if I were to take out a uh, 50% loan against my 100 cake tokens and the cake token dropped in value by 50% one night while I was asleep Well, when I woke up, I would have no more cake tokens. They would be gone So leverage farming is kind of dangerous But if you say take out a 20 or 30% loan on your cake tokens Well, then you can go ahead and take those stable coins that they give you the RUSD tokens put them in a pool like the rusd busd pool stake those and then you're earning 30 percent on top of the fact that your cake tokens are growing at 112 percent so you're getting a total combination of 134 percent and you're relatively safe because you would have to have cake take like a 75 percent drop so that that's how leverage farming works now you can push that even further and if you can take your rusd and pair it with usdc and you can put it over here in the adamant pool, well then you can be earning 500% on your borrowed tokens while your other tokens are sitting over there on ramp DeFi, still staking and still growing. Now the reason why I said it might be a little bit more expensive on Polygon is because if you go over here to the Polygon network, you can, you can stake ramp, but as you can see, you can only really stake a few other tokens to mint. Now you do get some higher APYs on the ramp site over here. Like I could put my RUSD USDC that I'm staking on Adamant over here. And you could do this to maybe hedge your bet a little bit if you don't want Adamant to be holding all of your assets. But then you would be able to mint even more RUSD. Now, if you're similar, this works similar to the way Maker works. It works similar to the way Venus Finance works. So it's not a brand new idea, but it's just a new feature to the ramp token, to the ramp ecosystem. So hopefully if they can get a lot of adoption with this, which so far I think with the ramp token being issued over here on the RU8 into us um, on the adamant site where we've got four hundred thousand dollars you're going to see that this token probably is going to start to get embraced as people are looking for ways to go ahead and get some extra money to be able to do and play around in the DeFi system now obviously you have to be careful was where you put your RUSD tokens because before you can ever unstake your collateral you're going to have to pay that back so if you want to get your cub tokens out of there you want to take some profit you want to do some things you might be able to withdraw a tiny bit of it if you if you've staked up a little bit more but if you wanted to take your whole amount you're going to have to pay the, the RUSD back so you probably don't want to go put it out in super risky pools when you're doing the leverage farming i would suggest only getting into very safe things 
All right, guys. So now I'm going to get into talking a little bit about the Polydragon site. So Polydragon was the first farm that I got into over here on the Polygon network. A friend introduced it to me. They are basically a site that is similar to uh, the Goose Finance or the Cake Finance, but over here on Polygon, they might look kind of boring because they don't have a lot going on yet. The real key to this one is going through their, their docs. They have a very ambitious plan to be a very... Uh, very big project with launch pads and they, they want to be what cake is but they want to be it on polygon now can they reach that that's a uh, interesting thing to do but unlike any other farm they don't have a token that is inflationary forever instead they started out with a token with a lot of supply and are a deflationary model now the interesting thing about the deflationary model when you come to a token that is farmed in these different kind of forges and farms is that the the pools themselves can become holders of the tokens, the contracts, and so can a burn address. So with every transaction that happens with the fire token, you go ahead and see that the, a little bit of fire gets burned, a little bit of fire gets added to each one of these pools, making them kind of self-refilling self to an asset. And the more activity that you have going on with the token, the more that you can see that you're going to be having... Um, more and more tokens end up in each one of these things, the burn and the other things. And obviously, if you are just a holder of the token, it works like any other reflect token where you get it. One of the nice things they did is they were able to go ahead and exclude that uh, transaction fee when you are doing certain aspects with their token. So when you're adding it to liquidity pairs, they don't go ahead and take anything from you, which is a pretty neat thing to see. You don't really, it, it's fun to see that like, hey, this thing has a, a pretty big fee on it when I use it. I think it's 10%. I'll have to double check that guys. I should have before I got into this, but I'm going to lose 20% if I want to buy it and put it into liquidity. No, you're just going to earn, lose the little 10% that everybody does for their first buy. And then when you put it into your liquidity pair, you're going to be okay. And you're going to earn it back pretty quick, obviously, if you come into any of these farms. It is good to see they have uh, got their first couple of partnerships going on. So they did partner up with the Minimatic team. So they were able to offer a farm for the Minimatic uh, token over here. So that's what, that's pretty good to see. We want to see little sites like this start to reach out to other sites, start to grow, start to get other things going on. And they did actually add an interesting pool here with the HEX token. That That is uh, interesting to do because, you know, HEX holders have their own site to go ahead and stake their tokens on for very, very long uh, periods of time. But maybe somebody who doesn't want to get into that, it gives them some chances to come over here and get into this. I wonder how this one's doing. Not very well. <laughs> Only about 4000 dollars in here we'll go ahead and just look this is a very young project as you can see they only have a total value locked of just under a million dollars now the token price has been holding up pretty well because every one of their tokens is already out there and issued and there's been a lot of burning going on and while i got into this project at about a dollar fifty it's sitting here at about two dollars it's been as high as three dollars so it's not like it's been heading straight up but i just wanted to mention them and tell you guys about them because i'm going to keep following their project as i found out about it pretty early i don't don't actually have very much of the token which is kind of you know maybe my mistake but we'll see what happens with them I'm not really too worried about liquidity during the bear market interstellar because um, like if there's not a lot of liquidity in the pools then you just get to keep on earning more and if you're doing it the kind of the way that i'm doing it with assets that you want to hold for the future then you you don't have to worry about um prices right now and i'll kind of go over that a little bit when i get to cub finance at the end uh, a little bit more because it, it's very um you know, crypto goes up and down. We're going to go up and down quite a bit. We don't know exactly where we're going. The market's really red this weekend, but the stock market was really red this weekend. And unfortunately, I do feel like the stock market is tied to crypto as opposed to crypto being the hedge against the stock market currently. And it's because really a lot of the people who are investing in crypto with some of the large amount of money are people who are in sim similar situation to people that were investing in the stock market. I know I had a little bit of money in the stock market. I came over to crypto. I did much better in crypto i stopped trading stocks because I, I just couldn't have the kind of success there as i have here 
<laughs> yeah, thanks. I, I, I do like uh, showing some of the tricks that are out there and things that you can do. And that's one of the things that is going over here with uh, Minimatic. So Minimatic is very similar to uh, Ramp and how the, and, and Adamant, and, I mean Ramp and Maker and Venus. It's another site with a stable coin. Now their stable coin is sitting a little bit over $2. The interesting thing with them is that you actually make of your own vault. So you make any vault that you want um, and you put you stake the tokens here so you're going to go ahead and make a and, and make a pay, make a vault of any tokens that you want and then you're going to use those as liquidity and you can see you can do it from matic you can do it with rat bitcoin or link so you can do matic with anything so like matic usdc to be safe or matic something else to be kind of risky and then you can go ahead and put it into a pool a pool and so you'll see they have all these people that are creating their own little vaults with X amount of money in them and you see there's thousands of people doing it so you can pair whatever you want you, you you pick what you want to add you add the liquidity into here and then you go ahead and use this liquidity that you did to mint the new token they also have a reward structure and I do need to understand this a little bit but I wanted to at least uh, talk about uh, them a little bit because they are a partner of the polydragon token i came here and i took a look at it the site is still really like kind of small but they have some pretty serious money in, in these things at 117 million dollars in this pool and another uh, 18 million in this pool so they're, they're doing pretty well for a project that just came out i do need to understand a little bit more about the minimatic token so this is something i'm just you know showing you guys on the live stream i'll be doing more of a video about this in in depth once i've actually read through all their, their documentation because i haven't done that yet all right and then the last thing i have to cover is cub so cub finance this is kind of my most stable farm uh, farming project out there it's not something that's like amazing with apys that are going to blow you away but it is built from the leo finance team i'm a old steam user who became a hive user i, I know the guys from the leo finance who built it onto hive i've followed their project i've seen them build out a, an exchange a, a really good blogging platform i saw them build out an exchange for the hive engine tokens i saw them wrap their token put it on ethereum get hacked recover from that hack, pay everybody back every dime that they lost. Then I saw them go ahead and finally come into the world of farming and auto farming on the Binance Smart Chain. Because if you're a Hive user, you're used to literally no fees. So we don't like going to Ethereum. We don't understand it. We're like, how can anybody pay any money in fees? Because we don't pay anything in fees on Hive. And we do quite a lot of things. There's a lot of games built on Hive. I play Splinterlands. I play Rising Star. I play Holy Bread. I played uh, Hash Kings for a little while. I have a big D-City town. I do all of that stuff without one transaction fee ever. So when you, when you talk about going into anywhere else, it gets a little crazy. Yeah, you know, it, if, if, if you need your money now, getting into farming is dangerous. I'm not going to lie. I don't need my crypto money now. So that's something all of you should understand when you, when you're, when you see my videos and, and, you, and understand what I'm doing. Because I'm really trying to build a bigger crypto basket. I want to have more Bitcoin. I want to have more BNB. I want to have more DOT. I want to have more Cardano. I want to have more of any project that I think is going to succeed into the future. Because crypto is just going to grow and grow and grow and grow. And, and that's really what you should see when you talk about the last time we entered a bear market. Crypto was pretty new. There was only a couple exchanges. There was some FOMO that pushed the price up to 20K because there just really wasn't that many places you could buy it. And then the token just dropped and it dropped and it dropped and it dropped and it went all the way back down to 3K. But during that time, people kept building certain projects kept going and if you were holding like imagine if you had built up a big stack of bnb during the last uh bear market you would have probably retired when it ran up to five or six hundred dollars if you were able to sell out of it uh, the same thing with coins like litecoin uh, coins like bitcoin obviously that one it should be the main example so at some point i would like to have some big big bags and i do know that 
I've protected myself by moving a lot of my coins this last this last go up into the stable coin farms or into coins that I don't think will go down in value as bad. And if they do go down in value a little bit, well, then that's at the point that I'll start buying again. I haven't actually been buying with my outside money for, I don't know, about four months. Um, I've just been using the money that I farm and the uh, the, to the money that I earn from my different NFT projects, and I've talked about those in other videos. I make a good amount from playing Splinter Lands. I make a good amount from the R Planet project. I do play Alien Worlds, and I make a little bit of money from that. And then I use really what I would consider safe-ish farms. And you know, I've been burned a couple times, without a doubt, in the yield farm space. I had some iron. I took a I took a hit on the face on that one. I invested in. Um, rug eth which turned out to be a rug i invested a tiny bit of money into fair moon that project ended up blowing up though they're trying to rebuild so we'll see if their new rebuilt token does anything but i've i've always invested only a tiny bit of money into those projects because really when i'm getting if i if i would have put 500 dollars into say shibu or safe moon i just picked the wrong you know little projects to get into you could have made quite a uh, quite a lot of money so uh, that's that's what i'm playing with a little bit over there Oh, you know what? I, I, I can't live only in Solana. And maybe you can tell me, Interstellar, what projects are you in? Because I'm in Radium. I'm in Soul Farm. I took a look at the Serum Dex, but it didn't look like you could do anything there but, but provide liquidity. Um, I'm, I Step Finance looks pretty cool, so I have some of their tokens in the Soul Farm. Uh, that Orca is a leverage trading platform, I believe. Or no, Mango. Mango. So... What else is out there? Let me know a couple other projects to look at on Solana because I really like th their their tech. It works fast. It's super cheap to use. There's just not that many places to go. And so I feel like one of the problems with that is people are not incentivized to like move around and trade money or bring lots of new money into there. And I've been really disappointed in the fact that the Radium token has fell down to like four bucks. Um, and the, uh, what is Serum is down around five. So only so only the soul token seems pretty good to hold. Yeah, I've heard of uh, that Star Atlas game. It looked kind of interesting. I just didn't get into it because, it, like you said, it does look like it's like a huge metaverse game. And since I am making YouTube videos and trying to um, farm and and keep up with all the news and crypto and I have another job, I don't have time to get into games that take a lot of time. So that's kind of why I'm such a big Splinterlands player right now. Maybe if my channel grows enough and things turn around and crypto gets really big and I can quit the other job and just do this, then I could have some time to get into some more of the crypto games that take a long time to play, but it's just not something I can do right now. Um, but we'll get back here in showing you the updates on Cub. So Cub is going to be launching onto Polygon soon. So that's one of the things to know about them is they are going to go ahead and, and, and do a sister project that is going to support the Cub token over on Polygon. I don't know how quickly that's going to happen. I'm guessing it's more going to be like two to three weeks. So I'm giving you kind of an early announcement on this if you haven't heard it before. So I'm starting to try to stack as much Cub token as I, as I can. Now, they are switching over no longer from a site that works like Pancake uh, Swap or goose finance they are turning into a site that's trying to target the auto farms of the world or the adamants of the world they are simply doing it with a different model so instead of adamants 30 percent fee where they go ahead and then pay out those fees to users they are going with a, a token that you can farm in the cub token and then the idea is they are going to take these 10 percent fees and use 7% of them to burn the Cub token, so to buy back and burn, and 3% to pay BNB dividends to the people that stake the Cub token. So it's a similar project idea to Adamant and a similar uh, project to Auto Farm or Pancake Bunny, but they're really going to be taking the model of doing less fees than those and not the big fee re reproduction, which allows you to stake stuff that you want to grow and grow it faster. Oh, okay, that's one I'll have to check out. Let me write that down. Mercurial Finance. I've been really looking to look at some new stuff on, on those other tokens.
So um, as you can see right now, they've only got the Cub Kingdom, a Cake Kingdom, which earns 128%, which is pretty pretty spectacular for Cake, single staking. They have BNB, BUSD, ETH BNB, and DOT BNB. This dot BNB is one that I'm in, and I have a pretty good amount of dot and BNB in here because earning 98% on my dot BNB LP is something I'm pretty comfortable with because I do think eventually, and it's taking dot a long time to get there, but when they get into their parachain auctions and people have to start spending an incredible amount of dot, you're going to see that token rise pretty high. And I don't even mind being in an LP pool where if dot blows up while I'm asleep, I'm going gonna, it's, it's, I'm gonna to end up with a whole bunch more BNB. <laughs> I don't I don't mind that so much obviously when the parachains start to actually get rolling I might look to pull my liquidity out so that I'm holding my token separately So if one goes up a whole lot, I don't have that impermanent loss, but I'm just gonna go ahead and let these farm and I'm gonna let them uh, Grow in the auto compounding farm and then uh, for now I'm keeping the cub rewards because I want to be ready for when they launch their new uh platform on Polygon because there's going to be some kind of airdrop. They're being very hush-hush about when the airdrop's going to be, where your cub tokens have to be to be able to get the airdrop token when they launched onto Polygon. But I do want to make sure that for now I build up my cub. And you might notice that the cub token has gone up from literally about 38 cents to 72 cents. It's because I'm not the only person who knows this is coming and people are starting to save this token. So if you have gotten to this farm at all and you've just been selling off your cub rewards, it might be time to start to hold some of them so you can make sure you get the airdrop. You know, something I've heard about Serum, and maybe you guys can tell me if this is right or wrong, um, I mean about Solana, is that the liquidity pools from all the sites, the idea behind it is that they're going to be the same liquidity pool. So there, so that we don't have the kind of the pancake bunny pool versus the panther swap pool versus the uh, cub pool as they're doing their own pools for their tokens. You just end up having one liquidity pool pair, token pair get created and once it's created it's on like the overall solana liquidity pairing and then every single site that's out there taps into the same liquidity pools but they can go ahead and say hey if you stake your liquidity pools through us we're going to track that you did that and then we're going to reward you with our token as well that's how i understand solana works and it's kind of revolutionary in my mind because it does create liquidity pools that are very very safe and very very protected if they are all being made and put on the same place you never have to worry about your liquidity disappearing if those uh, those core pools in the middle are protected and safe you don't have to worry about pancakes stealing your liquidity they can't because the they're overall all controlled in the middle and it's just about um, what project gives you the best cookies on top for for getting into them so that's how I kind of understand that that works we'll go ahead and bring up soul farm and talk about some of their stuff right now um, we'll go to their vaults now this is one of the things I have that I have to notice when you look at a project like soul farm unfortunately they just haven't had the same uh, ability to grow the way adamant finance can because you've got brand new farms popping up on polygon every single day probably <laughs> Um, certainly every few days and we've had these same liquidity pairs here for a long time on um, on uh, soul farm so it's not letting them grow this TVL in a way that is making people want this tulip token uh, bad enough and th that I think is kind of a mistake I'm staking my tulip over here so that I can grow it with the USDC and I have not sold any of my tulip tokens I continue to just compound them into this pool so We'll, we'll have to see if they can um, eventually get so, this place growing in a way that they can be adding more pools and be uh, better because uh, they've been very, very reactive to go ahead and make sure that they, they adjust to everything Radium does, but everything that they're doing is tied to the Radium pools because I feel like Radium is the only place out there where soul farm can really run its model where you're going to stake your tokens here we're going to take your your radium rewards that you would be earning and we're going to turn them back into your lp pool tokens because that's the idea of an auto farming site well they need some sites where they can go ahead and stake their tokens because if not you know these aprs are going to just start i mean the step one is still pretty cool but the step token also has just been 
taking a beating in price because of how fast you can earn it. And so once this normalizes, hopefully Step can start to turn around and come back up and hopefully their project really gets going. I know their site was looking pretty good last time I was there, but I don't think they really had stuff. Oops, that's not good. Let's see what I can find really quick. I think I was on their test site or something and it didn't load. Yeah, so here we go. So step looks pretty good. I have to admit, I absolutely love the dashboard. I also like the idea that it's gonna be very, very easy for them to uh, create a dashboard. I'll go ahead and log in. I don't have that much um, money in my, in my wallet. I'm actually, I think I'm down just a tiny bit. We'll see, yeah. I put $1,000 into the Solana network and I'm down to about 823. With how bad stuff is down, that's not too bad. Because <laughs> a lot of stuff just flew down in value. My soul tokens that I bought are pretty much around where I bought them. So these are, these are equal. But everything that I bought to put into these pools is down. I put about uh, $200 into each one. So the raised soul has been okay. It's probably because the soul token has been holding up in price pretty well. Um, but I, I took a, I, I took a pretty good hit on step, lost 70 bucks, took a pretty good hit on the Ray soul farm that I was in, lost about $70 and the tulip USD farm. I didn't actually put $200 in. I just put, um, my, uh, my, uh, tul tulip tokens that I had earned, um, all into here with the USDC. So this one is actually doing okay for me, except for, I think when I paired these up, tulips were like $10. And then they went up and then they came back down. So we'll have to see. But, I mean, it's a really, really clean site. I love the fact that they're going to be able to, I think, because of the way Solana is built, always show you all of your pools you're in and where they are and what they're worth. And I love the fact that, like, like it's so hard sometimes to find one of these sites that tracks everything. And Step seems like it will be able to, to do everything. One of the other things is because I said that the liquidity pools are shared throughout the entire network, they can go ahead and show you all of the liquidity pools. One of the other things of having just one big liquidity pool is that you end up with these fees that are shared out and some of the APYs and some of the pools are pretty amazing. Now, obviously some of these might be tokens that just aren't being traded that much here because you do have to have some volume for it to, for it to matter. But we'll try to find, you know, one here. So here you go. So if you're in step USDC, you're earning actually a pretty good amount, 11% APY just for holding those tokens from the fees. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, maybe some of these other ones, you know, 17% for sole USDC. So that, that's a pretty, pretty high APY just for staking your tokens in there. So it's a, it's a very interesting uh, platform for you to be able to track quite a few things. Um, I don't know if it's past beta. Um, like see this opportunities thing, they, they haven't done this yet. This is one of the things that they're supposed to be able to do that they really tout is they're going to be tracking everything. And when something new comes out, you're going to find it here first. They don't have their bridges up as you can see. So it looks like they're still building. They do have a swap functionality, but I mean, this isn't really anything too special. And then you can pull liquidity here. And then the idea is you're supposed to be able to pull liquidity here and then add it in through any other site. Um, I need to play around with it a little bit more. I haven't done a video on it yet because I haven't been able to use it yet either. Yeah, yeah, I, I do know they their 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 plans are why I'm going. I'm just holding their step tokens. And once the once honestly the um, liquidity gets. Uh, the uh, the, uh, the issuance rate gets down low and I see the token tart to turn around I'm planning on pulling my liquidity out and just holding the step tokens because basically right now I'm dollar cost averaging in in that farm you know as I'm losing money but I'm gaining just more and more and more step tokens and I, I don't have a ton well, how many do I have so I have 208 but if the price keeps tanking then eventually when I pull my liquidity out maybe I'll have three or four hundred tokens and then I'll just hold those tokens and I'll hope that they go up in value because if they can take a run up to like 10 or 20 bucks, then that would be a nice little payoff for myself. Yeah. So there, there's a lot of reasons to believe that step could be something pretty special. I actually might look to put some more money into the liquidity pool. 
uh, a step here in the future. I just haven't been moving anything over any more money over to uh, Solana right now, but everything is on super sale. So it, this might be one of the first times I bring a little outside money in and just bring it into this platform um, and, and into the Soul Farm farm for it because a lot of the secondary tokens on Solana are on serious, serious discount. If you believe Radium, if you believe Step, if you believe Serum are going to be big projects in the future and, and, and kind of like, you know, the, the, the big exchanges and things on this network, then they're pretty exciting uh, pr at prices right now. If you got into them a few weeks ago, they're kind of depressing, depressing prices though. Let's see if I can find this other project you talked about. Mercurial Finance, not Rhinance. So this is a Solana project? Oh yeah, okay. It's got a faucet. Oh, this is, this is testnet, a testnet faucet. Vaults. DevNet. So is this super early? I don't know, Interstellar. Is this project like super, super early? Oh, is this one of those ones where you you can you can put in like different kinds of stable farms so you can make like a basket of three different stable farms? I'm gonna have to read, obviously. Let's see for stable assets on Solana. Oh, you know what? I'll read this up, and it's it's kind of interesting. I might have to do a video on this one to add to my uh, Solana playlist. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll I'll look into this more, man. You've been a pretty good fan of my channel, so I can do a video about this. Probably, it looks pretty interesting, and there's not a whole lot going on on Solana that I've been able to find. Yeah. Uh, so that that's pretty interesting that it's a brand new thing. I mean, it looks like i mean, just quickly from about it that you're gonna you're gonna give them a basket of stable coins, and then they're gonna have the ability to go ahead and take this basket of money and, and put it into things. Is that the basic idea of it? Yeah, because it's definitely looks that way that you just you just can go ahead and put a whole lot of stable coins in here, and then they'll be earning money with the stable coins that you're here and you'll actually be able to get some money back um which is kind of an interesting idea all right thanks for showing that one to me somebody else wanted me to look at something i wrote it down on a different page <laughs> i think it was shield i've heard of shield before have you guys heard of shield yeah I forget what what chain this is on. Oh, it's multi-chain DeFi insurance. So that's right. Shield Finance is one of the insurance things. So they're on Polkadot, Binance, Solana, and Ethereum. So they're not on Polygon. They're on, but so they're on Binance chain. Insurance is definitely one of those things I need to kind of get into and take a look at. It'd be interesting to see if you could secure insurance for, for what, what they offer insurance for. Because I can't imagine they insure like the super crazy um, uh, farms because those farms are too risky. They would just be paying out all the time when I came to them and go, man, I lost like 70% because my farm went to hell. <laughs> Oh, Shield Network. So not the insurance one. Okay, I haven't heard of Shield Network. Okay, so they did a token migration. Pancake swap, so this is Binance Smart Chain. What are they building?
I don't know. Is it just an idea at this point? We are higher. You could buy it on, but why would I want to buy it? What does it do? Is this is this the right one? Shield Network. Rob, let me know. I mean, I I see they have. Okay, so it's that one. Well, what do they do? I have to remember you guys are like a few seconds behind me. <laughs> I don't know. Listed on. So it's listed everywhere. So they did a good job that. There's a how to buy. There's a we are hiring section. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. A pre audited token launch pad. So they're going to try to. They're going to try to be a launch pad that audits projects before and then launches tokens that theoretically will be safe. And my guess is you have to hold the shield token to get into the launch pads. Okay. That's interesting. I mean, I could check it out a little bit more and maybe go through the white paper later. They look like they're very new. Um, I don't see any we launched this project here. There is an auto burn. And they're, so they're saying because there's an auto 1% that gets redistributed, there's a frictionless staking. That, that's not really that special anymore because a lot of projects are doing that. But I mean, I, 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 uh, I don't know. It, it's somewhat interesting. I mean, the Binance Smart Chain has a couple established launch pads, so they're going to have to fight to beat out BSC pad um, as far as, you know, getting projects to want to launch here. But it's definitely interesting if they can actually launch a few projects or at least have a couple projects sign up to launch. It'll probably help the token a lot. So that's what I'd be looking for them to do. Oh, okay. Well, I, I'll, I'll read up on it more, and if it's interesting, I'll try to do a video on them. Uh, so I got some homework to do on the Mercurial Finance and the Shield Network. Um, like I said, I have to like the project, so I'll have to see something in there that really gets me interested. All right, guys, um, any other questions or, or projects anybody wants me to look at really quick? Because we're coming up on an hour, so I'm going to try to end the stream here. I don't like to go too much over that. Again, thanks to all the new subscribers who've been coming to my channel and checking it out. Uh, once again, I am sorry for anyone that lost anything in any of these Titan Matic pools. Um, I do still think Adamant Finance is a gem, and I'm going to continue trying to earn more Addy tokens by investing in some of the farms that are out here and uh, building up my stake. Uh, one of the things we didn't talk about, maybe anybody who watches this to the end, do you claim your vested Addy and lock it? Do you claim it and sell it because it's at a high, or do you just let it vest? Because this APY of 1,000%, uh, APR, this 1,000% creates an APY that is pretty amazing, but you have, to, you have to either buy and lock Addy, or if you're earning it, you have to claim it early, take a 50% hit, and then put it in here, and you start earning it back at 1,000%. So take a 50% hit and earn 1,000%, or don't take a 50% hit because you're never going to be able to buy tokens that cheap. I don't know. Yeah, leave a comment with that, Interstellar. I'd like to check that out, too. I had a feeling after the hackathon ended on Solana, we'd finally start to see some projects coming out, so there'd be more things that I could try to cover on that chain. I do want to kind of build up some stuff because I do think Solana has a chance to to be a player in, in the L1 uh, you know out there because they have a big war chest of money they're a faster network ethereum is having trouble scaling we've had the polygon network even have a couple times where when iron was falling apart the whole network fell apart and people who didn't know how to adjust their gas were having massive problems though i did hear solana had one issue too i really want to see who's going to be the first chain to come out and not freeze up when something goes bad because 
That's what we really need. And if Cardano is the first one to do that, or Polkadot is the first one that's able to do that with the parachain model, I really think the first chain to prove itself under battle-tested situations, like when there's a major project doing a drop or when there's a major token dumping and people are trying to get out of it, I mean, it is so frustrating not to realize the network is slow and do a transaction at only like maybe two or three GUE on Polygon and realize you needed to up it to like 100 or 200 to get anything done. And then you're sitting there and you're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting. And the token price is just dropping and dropping and dropping. You're like, this is ridiculous. How is this the future? We really need that kind of stuff to work better because I feel like guys who buy Ethereum and, and just hold it on exchanges because Ethereum is the internet of money and the oil. They haven't actually tried to use it because when you try to use regular Ethereum, you can, you can make some really stupid mistakes and lose money or get transactions stuck or try to buy something and, and, you're, and you think you bought it, but it turns out you didn't because somebody else paid more gas than you. I mean, Ethereum has so many like issues that the only way to fix is by being rich and having so much Ethereum that you can pay super extra gas and I don't really like networks that work like that. It's very frustrating. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I hope you have a good day. I hope you guys are, you know, not stressing out too much on the, the you know, everything being down right now. I don't think we're going to stay down here. So I do have a Telegram group. It's listed in any of my other videos. I can go ahead and drop a link here. Uh, I did want to just, you know, I'll bring it up. It's been growing. We have 65 members. If you join... Don't shill refer referral links. Don't overshill projects, but you can introduce stuff to me. And be kind because I'm not tr I'm, I don't have a lot of mods. Eventually, I might have to get some of the things get out of control. But when Iron fell apart, if you were here, a guy came in and he told us Iron was falling apart and a few people got out early. I was unfortunately stuck in a work meeting and I didn't see it. Also, some people yelled at him to stop fudding. And he was maybe fighting a little too hard because he was basically saying it's a rug, 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 rug. And we don't really know if it was a rug. But in general, he brought up the conversation early on and he was able to get out of Titan when I think it was still in like the $30 range and a few other people did. So it's, it's really good to at least be in some kind of telegram groups that, um, you know, uh, see, I'm, I'm a telegram noob, though. I need to learn how to use it. How do I get a link? <laughs> I think I have to click on it over here. I've done it before. I'm such a moron. <laughs> I'll, I'll figure it out and I'll drop a comment on the post. Or actually, I have it um, here. Do, do, do. Have it saved on one of my clipboards. Oh, I've not signed into chat from there. I have to go over here. There we go. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end it there. I hope you guys had a, a good time hanging out with me for a little while. And I, if you're in the Telegram, you know, I'm usually around at least once or twice a day. And if you want to throw things at me or share projects, you absolutely can. And I definitely do take a look at anything anybody who's willing to come in here and talk to me about. So.